On today's episode, I'll show you a little device that I made to help me detect heat creep. I'll explain it all on today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. When you're printing with PLA, the glass transition temperature is 50 to 60 degrees C. That's the point where the filament actually starts to get soft. It doesn't melt, but it just starts to get a little bit soft. That's why we make our beds 50 to 60 degrees C, because it softens that first layer so it sticks, so it doesn't want to lift off the bed. If the top of your hot end, where the heat sink is, gets to be that same 50 degrees C, it starts to soften the filament, and that's when you start to get blockages or inconsistent flow. So that's why the fan cools the top of your hot end to keep it well below that 50 degrees C. But if your fan should ever stop or slow down or have some broken fins or gunk that gets in there, just little dust or, or lint, and it can't blow as well, the top of your heat sink can get hot enough to the touch. And if you can touch it and it feels hot, you're in that 50 to 60 degrees or above. So I developed a little circuit with a temperature sensor that's mounted to a little eyelet so I can screw this right to the top of the heat sink. And that way the temperature sensor can monitor the heat sink and the circuitry will turn on an LED if it ever gets above about 40 degrees C, giving me an early indication that that fan is failing. You better check it out. I made one to fit the Ender 3 Pro, and it's notched out so it fits inside the fan shroud. Here it is with the fan shroud in place, and it doesn't interfere with the operation of the printer. If the fan should ever fail or give me problems not cooling the heatsink, the LED will turn on just like this, indicating there's a problem. So let's test it out. I'm going to put a thermocouple right here on the top of the heatsink so I can monitor the temperature on this meter. And now what I'm going to do is actually put a screwdriver inside the fan so the fan can't spin. So this is a worst case condition. Then I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to go to the temperature menu and I'm going to set the nozzle to just spin it 260, so maximum temperature. And I'll go back to the info screen and you can see it's going to start heating up. I've sped this up for the video, but you can see the temperature is climbing and the LED is starting to light. It started about 40 degrees and at 46 degrees this thing is solidly on, showing there's a problem. Now I'll pull the screwdriver out so the fan can start working and this thing will start cooling down. You can see the LED slowly goes out and about 40 degrees, it's back to normal. The circuit itself is actually powered by a 3-volt coin cell, so it's completely separate from the power of the 3D printer. But what was interesting is I shut it off with the hot end still hot and I saw the light come on. I know there's many times people will print, they'll finish their print, they shut off the printer and walk away, but that heat's still there. They didn't let it cool down, so it comes in heats up the heat sink and could expand that filament and therefore when you come back the next time to print you got a blockage you know like how did that happen well, it's because you let the heat creep into the heat sink by just walking away and that's what this indicated because it stayed powered while the rest of the machine including the fan was shut off i created the circuit board on my pcb mill but if you want to create this you could do it simply through pcbway.com PCBWay.com is a great place to get circuit boards. I use them all the time. You can get 10 pieces for only $5 plus shipping. Or if you want assembly, you can get assembly services for a low cost. And it doesn't stop there. They offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. Ordering circuit boards is easy. Just upload your Gerber files and then go through their selection menu. And you can just go with the defaults, or you can do things like change the board color. And then you order them, they'll ship them out to you, top quality. I highly recommend PCBWay.com. Now I know some viewers will be looking for schematic or information on how to build this, and I'm not releasing that right now. I'm still working on improvements and maybe a better design overall. And I don't know if I'm going to turn it into a Filament Friday product or just make it an open source thing. I'm still thinking all that through. But the main thing of this video was to show that it could be done and also to demonstrate how shutting off your machine early can cause heat creep. So it's something to be aware of. If I do release this, it'll be on Patreon first. That's where I put a lot of my stuff. So if you're interested in stuff like this, join us on Patreon. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way. And if nothing else, click on that Film of Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time, right here at Film of Friday.